Hello, this recording is about disk storage. Disks are very important storage medium, especially for servers and desktop computers. They are non-volatile. They don't need continuous electrical power to retain their contents. They are made out of rotating magnetic storage. This is an example hard disk. Its cover is removed so that we can see what's inside. We see here that there are three disks. These three disks rotate. They rotate in high speed, like 15,000 revolution per minute. These three disks are, are fixed on the same rotating axis, on the same spindle and usually they are coated with magnetic material from both sides. Uh, this is read-write head and uh, you have read-write heads as many as there are storage surfaces. For example here we have we have six read-write heads. They are all connected together and they move radially together. Data is stored in circles. Each circle is called a track and the six tracks that have the same radius are called a cylinder. And the read-write heads usually read uh, from one cylinder at a time. The unit of reading and writing is one sector. And usually this sector is a half kilobytes. Each sector has a, a sector ID. It contains the stored data like 512 bytes or maybe 4K bytes. Uh, there are uh, error correcting code, error correcting code for the data and it is written with it and it is read with it and we use it to correct any errors in the stored data. Also, there are synchronization fields and gaps between one sector and the next. And the synchronization fields are used to know the start of a sector. Now to some performance issues. Accessing a sector takes some time and this time depends on uh, these factors. Queuing delay depends on how many requests are before the current request. If there is none, then the queuing delay is zero. The seek time is the time to move the heads, the read-write heads, so that they are above the cylinder that we want to read from. And uh, this depends on how fast the read-write heads move and how far is the cylinder from the current uh, head position. The uh, rotational latency depends on how fast the hard disk rotates and uh, depends on how far is the sector from the read-write head. The worst case is the time of one complete rotation and the best case is zero and the average is uh, half half rotation uh, transfer data transfer time depends on how much data we want to uh, read or write and the controller overhead is usually a small time needed by the microcontroller to process the uh, request Let's take an example. Assume that we want to read 512 uh, bytes. We want to read one, one sector from a disk that rotates 15,000 revolution per minute. It has four milliseconds average seek time. Uh, it can transfer 100 megabytes per second. Its uh, con uh, controller overhead is 0 0.2 two milliseconds and the disk is idle this means that the, there is no uh, queuing delay now the average read time will be four milliseconds seek time 
the rotational latency is the time of half revolution first we convert the speed from 15,000 revolution per minute to revolutions per second which is 5,000 15,000 revolution per minute divided by 60 seconds per minute which is 250 revolutions per second now the time of one rotation is 1 over 250 which is 4 milliseconds half one rotation is 2 milliseconds now uh, the transfer time is the amount of data we want to transfer divided by the transfer rate which is small time uh, we have also 0.2 milliseconds controller delay and uh, the total time is 6.2 milliseconds this time is mainly dominated by the rotation latency and the seek time we'll see later for several reasons the actual seek time usually is lower than the average the average seek time is 4 milliseconds but usually the actual seek time is lower let's say if it was 1 milliseconds then the average read time would be 3.2 milliseconds this is another example uh, let's assume that we have a hard disk that rotates 15,000 revolution per, per minute and there are 2 megabytes per cylinder every cylinder holds 200 megabytes what's the sustainable peak transfer rate so if we're going to read cylinders a lot of data one cylinder at a time after the initial seek time uh, and rotational latency we don't suffer from these times anymore and to read a large amount of data then the transfer rate is the most important factor as you have seen we need four milliseconds to have a complete rotation in four milliseconds we read two megabytes so the transfer rate will be two megabytes divided by the time to read uh, this this cylinder which is 500 megabytes per second now I'd like to show you a video titled how do hard drives work from TED education lessons worth sharing Imagine an airplane flying one millimeter above the ground and circling the earth once every 25 seconds while counting every blade of grass. Shrink all that down so that it fits in the palm of your hand and you'd have something equivalent to a modern hard drive, an object that can likely hold more information than your local library. So how does it store so much information in such a small space? At the heart of every hard drive is a stack of high-speed spinning disks with a recording head flying over each surface. Each disk is coated with a film of microscopic, magnetized metal grains. And your data doesn't live there in a form you can recognize. Instead, it is recorded as a magnetic pattern formed by groups of those tiny grains. In each group, also known as a bit, all of the grains have their magnetizations aligned in one of two possible states, which correspond to zeros and ones. 
Data is written onto the disk by converting strings of bits into electrical current fed through an electromagnet. This magnet generates a field strong enough to change the direction of the metal grain's magnetization. Once this information is written onto the disk, the drive uses a magnetic reader to turn it back into a useful form, much like a phonograph needle translates a record's grooves into music. But how can you get so much information out of just zeros and ones? Well, by putting lots of them together. For example, a letter is represented in one byte, or eight bits, and your average photo takes up several megabytes, each of which is eight million bits. Because each bit must be written onto a physical area of the disk, we're always seeking to increase the disk's aerial density, or how many bits can be squeezed into one square inch. The aerial density of a modern hard drive is about 600 gigabits per square inch, 300 million times greater than that of IBM's first hard drive from 1957. This amazing advance in storage capacity wasn't just a matter of making everything smaller but involved multiple innovations. A technique called the thin film lithography process allowed engineers to shrink the reader and writer. And despite its size, the reader became more sensitive by taking advantage of new discoveries in magnetic and quantum properties of matter. Bits could also be packed closer together, thanks to mathematical algorithms that filter out noise for magnetic interference and find the most likely bit sequences from each chunk of readback signal. And thermal expansion control of the head, enabled by placing a heater under the magnetic writer, allowed it to fly less than five nanometers above the disk surface, about the width of two strands of DNA. For the past several decades, the exponential growth in computers' storage capacity and processing power has followed a pattern known as Moore's Law, which in 1975 predicted that information density would double every two years. But at around 100 gigabits per square inch, shrinking the magnetic grains further or cramming them closer together posed a new risk called the superparamagnetic effect. When a magnetic grain volume is too small, its magnetization is easily disturbed by heat energy and can cause bits to switch unintentionally leading to data loss. Scientists resolved this limitation in a remarkably simple way, by changing the direction of recording from longitudinal to perpendicular, allowing aerial density to approach one terabit per square inch. Recently, the potential limit has been increased yet again through heat-assisted magnetic recording. This uses an even more thermally stable recording medium whose magnetic resistance is momentarily reduced by heating up a particular spot with a laser and allowing data to be written. And while those drives are currently in the prototype stage, scientists already have the next potential trick up their sleeves. Bit-patterned media where bit locations are arranged in separate nano-sized structures, potentially allowing for aerial densities of 20 terabits per square inch or more. So it's thanks to the combined efforts of generations of engineers, material scientists, and quantum physicists that this tool of incredible power and precision can spin in the palm of your hand.